first story. My narcissistic wife of eight years is cheating on me with our son's baseball coach on my bed and saying it's my fault that she cheats, even her family supports her. I'm so done with this SHT and going to throw divorce papers in her face. I have been married for eight years. Five and six-year-old kids. I've been madly in love with her the whole time, as she's an amazing person and mother. Literally keeps the family together and is just spectacular, truly. She was showing me something on her phone, and I saw a text come in saying, I love you more. And I asked who it was. She explained that it was a co-worker that she's been helping out, and I thought nothing more of it. That day, we had a lot of family over to celebrate our daughter's birthday, and it was a wonderful time. Some stayed overnight, so the next day, after a wonderful weekend getting company out and putting the kids down, my wife said she needed to tell me something. Well, the fact that I love you more was not from her coworker. Well, at least not the one she explained it was. But I'm not sure because she's not sharing any details regarding the other person. She told me that six months ago, when I was in a dark place and have since come out of no drugs except weed and booze, which we both partake, she found love in someone else. I wasn't providing love in our relationship. If I have feelings for someone else, I'm not sure that I should be married. It's not fair to you or me. I never planned for this to happen, but now that it's a reality, we need to deal with it. She explained that she wasn't looking for someone else. It just happened. A friendship that bloomed into more. She's also told me that they have not been intimate and explained that as a sexual relationship, she says life is too short and she wants to be happy. She's proud of all the changes I've made and I've always been a good dad, but I've grown into a great dad and my kids and I have never been closer. But she wants to be 100% happy, and the changes I've made haven't gotten her there. So she is seeking elsewhere. She says this person may not be the 100% answer. She worries that I'm at the best I can be, and that's not enough. Yet she's not giving me specifics. We've had a beautiful, loving relationship. We are known to be well out together and have our SHT in line. We'd be the last couple that folks would think this was happening to. So, I'm devastated. Absolutely totally ripped apart, and I don't know what to do. We own a house together that we're making payments on. I carry no debt besides said home, and she's in the same position. We had a perfect life together, and I'm suddenly being blindsided by this six-month relationship that she has feelings for and thinks it's best we split. I have no idea how to move forward. I've told her she needs to let her family know what's going on so I can tell mine. It's her cat to let out of the bag. I'm just so sad for our kids. When we were dating and in marriage, Cheating was the one thing that would break us. We both come from broken families, and it was something I never wanted for our kids. I just feel so hollow and broken. She is or was my everything, and I am so thankful for the ten years we've been together. But I think the writing is on the walls, and I'm helpless. It's all up to her. I'm broken into a million pieces. Update. Five months later. She was caught by me catching a text at my daughter's birthday party that said, I love you more. When I asked what that was about, she said it was a co-worker she's been helping. Because we had all our family and friends there, I didn't push it. Later the next day, she came clean and said that she's been in a relationship for six months. This was back in October. She refused to tell me who it was with or what they'd done. I was devastated. Absolutely destroyed. Still am. So we spent some time apart. And she continued her relationship with him. I did some digging in the meantime. And looking at the phone records, it was our son's coach. I called her out on it and she still continued the relationship. I saw a lawyer, and he told me to not leave the house or the kids, and either try to work it out, or to leave and see a therapist. My therapist says, she's a narcissist, and that I should protect myself, protect my kids, and run. In December, she said she had cut it off with him, and wanted to try again. I gave her all the effort in the world, but I don't feel like her soul has been in it. She's not overcompensating, or has even truly apologized for what she's done. I've also gotten access to her photos. I'm the admin on the family Google account. And she doesn't know that I've seen all I have. She framed a picture of him, and had it maybe still does at her desk. I found naked selfies she sent him that I haven't even received. I found a picture of his naked arse in our beach condo, which I thought was a natural space as we were not sharing it during our time apart. I slept on those same sheets. I know that she was at a fancy restaurant with someone else. She screenshots all these deep love quotes that I know aren't about me so much that she loves rent-free in my head. She has a white bracelet with one black bead that she now wears every day. I've called her out on it. She lied once and said it was from her mom. And up until last week she said, Well, my best friend has the matching one. 
while her affair partner wears an all-black one with one white bead. I know what that represents. Again, she doesn't know I've seen all these things. So to this day, I can't find anything that suggests that she's still with him. But I know she uses Snapchat often and is secretive with her phone. Whenever I bring up the affair, this blows up because I said I'd try to not bring it up and get over it. But I simply can't. I'm not rubbing it in. But it does come up when we argue, which is almost every week. We do really well for a bit, up to and including intimacy. But then something happens, and we go back to SHT. She cancelled our babysitter for trivia this past Tuesday. And for this Friday, I got tickets for us to see a show. But she doesn't want to go because I can't get over her affair. Her parents' mom and stepfather both cheated on their spouses for each other and supported my wife. And they both called and texted me that it's unfair that I bring up her affair. The pictures of his life rent free in my head almost constantly. I can't get past what she's done now, no matter how hard I try. I don't know what to do as she's trying to make me the bad guy. And I'm like, I've been here the whole time. I didn't fall in love with someone else. I just don't understand, and I'm an emotional train wreck. Update. Three days later. Well, long story short. I literally just caught her at the family condo with the AF and have photos and video of his truck, his belongings in the home, and her coming out of the master, where he stayed behind a closed door. I also went into our shared car that she drove, and it was left unlocked in the parking garage with an open high noon on the cup holder and her wallet and belongings still in it. She came home and tried to talk. It was a calm conversation, but she kept saying it was my fault, and if I had communicated with her last night, I grey rocked her. Maybe she wouldn't have been with him. So I communicated that I would be home later this afternoon or evening, so she's unexpectedly watching the kids today. I wanted to hang with them, as she took them away from me yesterday to go do activities, and I would do separate activities today. However, I'm not emotionally able to give the kids the best of me right now, and I definitely don't want to be around her. I asked if she could sleep in a kid's room, and she got upset and stated that our bed is her bed, and she will sleep where she wants. I said, obviously. I've been for a six-mile walk already, and have been calling and leaving VMs at all the lawyers around. I know I can't abandon the home, but I can't be around them after what I just saw. Thank you to all of you who responded earlier this week and suggested Grey Rock and 180 for me. I implemented them, and I guess it drove her to this, but I'm officially divorcing her, and there's no going back. Thank you so much, C Crew. Edit and update. Legal counsel told me not to contact her, so that's what I'm doing. She texted me last night all about how she hasn't asked for a second chance, even though I've given them, and she loves me, and she is now willing to do therapy and share her locations and access to her phone. I can't see her rocking on the porch at 80. Yada yada. When I got home last night, she was in the master, so I slept upstairs. This am, no communication. She wouldn't even look at me. Yesterday, when I caught them with video, I saw his hat, and I noticed it was a local landscaper. So I called to see if he worked there. He does. Okay thanks. That was it. Liz MF just called me, saying if I want to talk to him, here's his number. Don't call my boss. I said I had nothing to say to you. He replied, I have nothing to say to you, and hung up. Also, her mom reached out and said how I must be devastated, that she's so sorry, and to call her when I have a chance. I'm going to continue my no-contact policy with everyone and let my lawyer once I secure one do all the talking. This is so damn hard. Second story. My scumbag husband of 20 years cheated on me with our 18-year-old girlfriend. I'm going to ruin his life whatever it takes. I'm going to use pseudonyms for anyone I reference in this post. I 41F am a stay-at-home mom. My husband 48M, whom we'll call Paul, works in finance. We have been married for nearly 20 years. We have two kids, whom we'll call Eric, our 18-year-old son, currently a senior in high school, and Mary, our 15-year-old daughter. They are both the lights of my life. My marriage with my husband has grown somewhat stale over the years for a myriad of reasons, such as his work schedule and how I've aged poorly since we first met. Our son Eric has a girlfriend 18F, whom he's been dating since they were freshmen in high school. We'll call her Amy. Eric absolutely adores Amy. She's his first love, and she's someone I've always considered family. This makes the whole situation emotionally excruciating for me. Last week, I inadvertently saw my husband's phone screen and got a glimpse of a text thread between my husband and Amy, our son's girlfriend, and I read what looked like a message from her telling him that she misses sucking his cork. I froze in place in complete disbelief. I spent most of the day convincing myself that I must have misread what I saw. However, I didn't misread it because, over the last several days, I discovered a file on his computer filled with tons of BBSM adultery. 
He clearly has an adultery addiction. He also saved photos of Amy from her Instagram on his computer. Although they weren't inappropriate, she was fully clothed. It was still the proof I needed to confirm that I wasn't going crazy. I also looked at his phone during opportune moments and saw more of their interactions. I wish I had never looked. They were filled with mean, horrible things said at my expense, with him constantly comparing me to her. He would call me fat and old, among other things, with Amy lolling. I've always had hunches or paranoid feelings that Paul has been cheating on me, but never in a million years could I have fathomed something like this. Last month, I found a thong in our bedroom that I knew wasn't mine. I turned a blind eye to it, being naive and acting like it was maybe our daughter's, even though that made zero sense. Not only is he cheating on me, but he's betraying our son. I'm completely devastated. I don't even think words can adequately describe the dread, anger and shock I feel right now. I'm totally overwhelmed by how to handle this because obviously action needs to be taken, but I'm terrified of what kind of psychic blow this will be for my son. I have no idea how to even broach this completely effed up topic with him. I wouldn't wish this predicament on my worst enemy. I can't even believe I married this scumbag in the first place. And then my mind started to race, realizing that I started noticing specifically unusual behavior from him around the same time Amy turned 18. Was he waiting for her to turn 18 before pursuing this affair? There are so many layers to all of this, and I'm completely paralyzed with fear and dread about it all. None of it makes any effing sense. How did this happen? Am I that much of a stupid idiot that I let all of this happen under my watch? Eric adores Amy, and the thought of revealing this sickening truth to him terrifies me. The impact on his young heart and mind could be devastating. My heart aches for Eric and Mary, who are completely innocent bystanders. I haven't confronted my husband about this because I'm frankly scared of the domino effect. I don't know who to turn to first about this. I share my story not for sympathy, but in search of understanding, and perhaps advice from those who might have had to grapple with deep betrayal. Thank you for listening. Update. My brother connected me to a very tough junkyard dog type lawyer. I saved screenshots of all his conversations with Amy. I was only able to get the last three months from iCloud. The conversations were mostly flirty and dirty talk. It was hard to stomach and completely sleazy, and I saw several negative things said about me. His call history showed he talked with her for hours pretty consistently. He uses dating apps. I took screenshots of his profiles and all of the active chats he has with his matches. It's very clear he uses a filter to seek out girls who are 18, 22 or so. I copied all of his files from the computer. He goes on SX chatrooms and forums, and he spends a ton of money on OnlyFans. I rummaged through every possible hiding spot I could think of in the house. He had various toys, blindfolds, cuffs, lubricants, etc. He also had different outfits, which looked kind of like a girl's Catholic school uniform, and a French maid type outfit too. I picked up Eric and Mary from school and we all drove to my brothers. They were able to sense something was awry when I picked them up. I delicately told them the entire situation, and I broke down crying. Mary had the most anger, even more than Eric. I met with Amy's mother and told her everything. She confiscated Amy's phone and gave me the entire chat log. It only dated back three months ago, like on my husband's cloud, almost as if they both deleted the messages at the same time. She told me Amy sobbed when confronted. Amy basically told her mother that she will never understand, and that she and him are in love. I don't want to get into too many details with what else she was saying, but suffice to say, it's very easy to assume that my husband slowly and methodically became a sage-like figure in her life, making her feel she could rely on him, and he took advantage of the fact that she came from a broken home. Amy is also non-stop insistent that their friendship only became romantic or physical recently, and before that, she said he was more of a friend and mentor. I confronted Paul over Zoom. The look on his face was scary. He became red and looked so sweaty. He had anger and panic in his eyes. His tone of voice was very defensive and frightening. He kept yelling the word, context, over and over again, and saying that, none of that happened. He was unable to speak without constant stutters and intensity. Nothing really made any sense to me. I refused to tell him where I was, and he said I had no right to take his kids away from him, and then he abruptly left the Zoom. My lawyer is filing for temporary sole custody of Mary and a restraining order. Mary is still the most angry. She's totally furious with her dad and Amy justifiably so of course. Mary is recollecting moments and times she watched her dad interact with her friends, and she's in knots about it. Eric is very clearly hurting, but he's so strong and very level-headed. He wants to see a therapist. The maturity my kids are showing makes me proud. They don't deserve this at all. We made the authorities aware of everything. 
I plan on being completely unforgiving and ruthless in this divorce. I'm reflecting on how I've been treated, how it's made me a shell of myself, and how I've had a very negative opinion of myself because of him over the last 20 years. I don't want to let this scumbag get away with it. I want to reinvent myself and move on stronger than ever. Third story. My wife decided to have kids, and after having our daughter, she openly resents and ignores her because she doesn't like motherhood. What should I do? We have been together for 12 years and have married eight of them. We always had great dynamics. She told me she would want two three children, and I was always more cautious due to my troubled childhood. This was a constant topic in the past. We talked about names for our future children. We had three girl and boy names chosen. When our first child was born a bit more than four years ago, I somehow opened up. Being a father made my life full. Everything was done naturally and seemed easy, and I was instantly ready for another child. I helped 50-50, even though I was working after four weeks of leave. Changing diapers, waking up at night, going for walks. However, she stopped wanting more. Even in the first two years of raising our baby girl, it was obvious she did not like motherhood. She could not sit down to play. She would rather pursue her hobbies. I would have to go on sick leave to care for her, because she would kind of burn out. After a week of being alone with our daughter, I am working from home all the time. I even play with her during non-video meetings. I thought it could be depression. But my wife is cheerful, has hobbies, and goes out with girlfriends. But if she has to be with the kid for two three days due to a cold, then misery comes. It is important to note that my wife and I both work in the same field. She is much smarter than me, but is lazy. She would do the bare minimum, whereas I love this field. I do research and train myself, and because of this, I earn 3x as much. She could do much more with her brain, but she does not care, which is fine. But she still demands that I go on sick leave with our daughter. I would point out that her salary would not support our lifestyle, and we could cook instead of ordering, but she does not want to. I feel SHT. My only support is my daughter. Her smile and laughter. I could not put her through a divorce since I was from a broken family. I am jealous of other mothers who love being with their children. Update 1. There are a lot of comments. I tried checking the most. Let me react here to the most common ones. She wasn't always like this. Even though she says sometimes she can't play with our daughter because it's hard. I think she can't find her way around playing with a small child. She also works from home. But when I am on sick leave, she is untouchable. I feel like she is escaping from interacting with her daughter when she has a chance of sinking into work. I love or loved. I have to look into myself. We have dates, and we have intimacy not as much as before our child was born. We even have a lot of help from our grandparents. She likes to try to toss the kid to her parents every possible weekend. The grandparents like the kid, so it's fine. But sometimes I have to persuade my wife to ask her parents, so I and sometimes she too can bring our daughters to the zoo and do something over the weekend. I never pressured the second child. I only said I was ready when someone asked me personally. But I always tried to put on my game face and say, we are not sure, when others asked. I will look into PPD. But it seems like she can handle our child in small doses, and she is happy during those times. For example, after kindergarten, she can play with her a bit. But she never proposes programs with her. Top comments. Uptown Lurker. Unfortunately, some women don't know what kind of mothers they're going to be until they have children. She may have meant what she said about kids when she said it, and then she simply found the reality much more difficult. Or if she had a difficult pregnancy or birth, she may be carrying some resentment of her own. Have you two discussed counseling at all? It seems like you're on different pages about a few things. Your daughters just brought the issues to the forefront. Nuala 127. I'm surprised no one has brought up that you said that your four-year-old daughter is your only support. This is not a healthy way to look at your young child. You are their support. They are not yours. You are not their friend. You are their parent. This mindset is not healthy for you, your wife, or your daughter. You're setting her up for enmeshment. I'd quit blub. I understand you, but for a woman, it's not, oh, I'll just get pregnant and give birth. And then they are okay and like they were before. Pregnancy and hormone changes affect women for years after pregnancy. And just because she is doing hobbies and meeting friends doesn't mean she's not struggling internationally. And yeah, okay, it comes naturally to you, but you weren't the one pregnant, giving birth, and going through postpartum. Almost every single woman is traumatized by her birth, and postpartum is not just for a few months, but for years. A lot of mothers experience not feeling okay or like themselves for years until they feel some sense of self again. Talk to her, and damn, don't call your own wife and mother of your child lazy. 
Just because someone could do something doesn't mean they have to. Also, unfortunately, some people just don't like small children or toddlers. Ask her if she needs something. Go to her and ask for an honest conversation without judgment. I repeat, no judgment. Stop pressuring her about having a second child. She doesn't want one. Talk to her about therapy, and also, I don't know about your relationship, but it doesn't sound like you both do a lot of stuff together. Yes, you love your daughter and spend a lot of time with her, but do you still love and take care of her as your wife? Go out with her, get someone to watch your kid, and surprise her. You guys need to work on your relationship. You sound bitter, and I bet she notices that too. Update. Hey again. I added an update to my previous post. Not the update that makes me happy, but at least I started moving forward. First of all, I received many messages, but not all were answered. Thanks for the support, dear internet people. On Friday, I brought our daughter to Grand's we have quite some help from our parents, and then I asked to have a chat with my wife. I told her how I felt and what I saw, and I asked how I could help her. I offered that she should take some time off a couple days alone, or with a friend of hers, and she said it's a good idea. On Saturday afternoon, while I went to Grand's for our child, she seemingly packed two big duffel bags worth of clothes and went away two bags are missing and lots of her clothes, so it was easy to do the math. I called her without success. But at least she answered my messages about at least saying goodbye to her daughter, to which she replied, It's not about her. It has been some days now. My daughter has asked where mom is a couple times, and I always tell her something like, She can't come home now, but she loves you. But it feels like I am lying to her face. I can't sleep or eat. And even my in-laws have no idea what is happening with my wife. I will talk to a lawyer tomorrow and start documenting everything, as a friend of mine told me. Just to answer a couple questions from the previous post. I am not just playing with my daughter. I bring her to kindergarten, and I bring her home too every day. I plan weekend activities and vacations, and I wash more than my wife does. I plan date nights for my wife and me, while grands came over, or we brought our child to their place. So there is that. Keep safe all. Top comments. 20 Keller 12. Whatever you do, don't let her do the in and out, back and forth bullshit. Don't let her vanish for weeks or months at a time. Pop back up for a visit or two, and then disappear again. That messes kids up badly. Either she's going to be a mom, or she's not. Silenuckle 30. Has she communicated any of her feelings about this with you? Is motherhood different than she expected? I've read both of your posts, and it seems like she's checked out from your perspective. Documenting and contacting a lawyer are just going to be the first steps. If or when she comes back, your priority is going to be your child. Do not let her be alone with her at all. Especially if she has ever said anything to the effect of wishing you could go back to the way it used to be between you two. Even on the less horrific side, she could say or do anything that could cause your child to suffer greatly. I would recommend therapy for both of you. If your wife is a disinterested parent, I'm betting your child has already picked up and internalized something from it. It could be small, like not trusting women, because she knows she can't rely on mom. Mirepoix. She clearly hates her child, and has resentment towards you both. You got it right with the lawyer and documenting. Well, you and your daughter are going to need therapy. This is the ultimate betrayal of trust, and now you have no support. Your daughter's smile can only do so much, and with mom gone suddenly, it may be harder for her to smile, and that's okay. I hate saying anything good about this but at least she left without hurting your daughter physically. A lot of women don't feel they can abandon their kids the way men do not all men obviously. I just mean disappear easier if they want while remaining in denial and kill them instead. And that's been on the rise. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.